Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I have quite an important topic to discuss and this is in relation to preventing heart enlargement, especially when, uh, whilst on steroids. So it's been a new thought that, especially in the steroid community, that um, high blood pressure is the cause or at least one of the important causes of an enlarged heart and I'm not here to disagree with that notion because that is true and high blood pressure is linked to hypertrophy of the heart um, which is essentially enlargement of the heart more specifically the cardiomyocytes which are in the muscle cells of the heart wall but I am here to um, talk about the cause of the hypertension being the most important thing to control when on cycle. And I just want uh, to educate those who don't know already that there is something, there's something more sinister at play when it comes to steroid use that needs to be looked at and considered. So I'm Dr. Downey and uh, let's go through um, this research. So it's quite a lot of research and I hope to get through it in a, a short amount of time. So essentially it started when I came across a case report of uh, steroid users. Now case reports aren't the best, but I enjoy reading them. So there was a 21 year old steroid user who had died as a result of ventricular fibrillation, which resulted in cardiac arrest or a heart attack. And they found that this person was using testosterone and nandrolone. But what was interesting in this case is on, on autopsy is that they found fibrosis of the heart and this fibrosis of the heart uh, they were just like fibrosis meaning like scarring and collagen deposition around the heart muscles and they thought it looked identical to what patients with Kahn's disease have or Kahn's syndrome and I'll now I'll elaborate what Kahn's syndrome is but they made some very interesting conclusions so there have been multiple people to, uh, who have refuted this claim that blood pressure control um, is essential on cycle because they say um, it's pointless due to there being androgen receptors in the heart. And what happens to the heart when these androgen receptors are stimulated by uh, testosterone or DHT is that these cells hypertrophy or get larger in size. But... Um, this uh, effect, whilst is uh, has been shown in an in vitro study, can't be proven in an in vivo study because, um, uh, well, even the uh, researchers mentioned in this paper, they can't prove it's the only reason um, steroid users have enlarged hearts or cardiac problems because there are so many other mechanisms at play which we will discuss. And furthermore, on succession of the steroids, the heart muscle tends to revert back to size. So it's commonly thought uh, that since this hypertrophy is reversible, that people on a steroid cycle will, uh, whilst they'll have hypertrophy on the cycle, on after removing the drugs, the heart will return to normal. And because of this process of, hyper, uh, of hypertrophy is reversible, but this is the problem I want to discuss. The hypertrophy isn't the issue here. And so this paper I, I will be referencing a lot in my argument against hypertrophy being the issue here. So the reason I don't think left ventricular hypertrophy in particular, which is the enlargement of the left ventricle, mainly in response to an increased afterload, which is like an increased blood pressure or peripheral uh, vascular resistance. Um, the reason it isn't an issue necessarily is because it's a functional change in which there is an increased pressure in the system, so the heart is adapting to this change, and it should make the heart more efficient against this change. So essentially, it shouldn't be pathological, but then why do people with uh, left ventricular hypertrophy have a higher associated mortality and go into pump failure. So whilst I was in medical school, it was explained like the, the heart just gets tired over time or outgrows its blood supply. Whilst I'm not saying those are not true, I'm saying that 
there's another component that needs to be considered. There needs to be a distinction between physiological LVH, which is when the heart just pumps against this increased demand and grows to meet the demand, or, well, fight against this increased blood pressure, versus pathological change. And pathological change in this case is where the heart doesn't necessarily hypertrophy, it just becomes heterogeneous. So it starts becoming more unlike a heart muscle, or the heart muscle. So they're not just heart muscle cells, there's more. And this is where in the paper in this paper they talk about the cardiac interstitium. So the interstitium is like the part between these heart muscle cells. And what they found in the interstitium is that they have these cardiac fibroblasts that can result in collagen deposition and fibrosis. So they essentially, if stimulated, they do cause a bit of scarring. So, and this makes the heart more non-functional or heterogeneous. So that if this changes how the heart typically looks. While in hypertrophy, the heart looks the same. The heart, the cells are just enlarged. So you get the normal cells of the heart, but they just enlarge. Whereas with this pat, uh, with this heter uh, heterogeneous change or scarring, the heart looks more unlike itself. So in the study, they looked at patients with hypertension and they found that um, in the hypertrophied left ventricle there was hypertrophy obviously and this the left ventricle had higher uh, had a very was fighting against a lot higher pressures they found it was a hypertensive left ventricle so they had this hypertrophy but they found that there was scarring or, col or fibrosis in the wall of the heart and so then they, they then compared it to the right ventricle, which on the other side of the heart is fighting against your lung uh, blood va uh, vascular system. So, and what they found in this heart, uh, uh, the right side of the heart, is there was no hypertrophy because it wasn't fighting against high blood pressure, but they did also find the scarring. So, or fibrotic change. So they they obviously concluded from this that in the case uh, that there's something circulating around the body causing this non-specific fibrosis that's not specific to the site of hypertrophy, and seems to be related to just um, the high blood pressure in the individual system. And they found it was this hormone called aldosterone. So what they found is that aldosterone influences these cardiac fibroblasts in the interstitium, so between cells, to, and they stimulate them to lay down collagen and cause this fibrosis or scarring of the heart. So this led them to conclude that whilst a high blood pressure does cause hypertrophy, hypertrophy isn't the, uh, the issue here. It's more this Hit, uh, uh, the scarring and fibrosis of the uh, the heart that is the issue. That is what results in the pump failure. And this is a result of the aldosterone production, and the aldosterone production results in high blood pressure also. Because generally, left ventricular hypertrophy without these changes is non-pathological and more of a functional change to, for the heart to become more efficient. And this is what leads us into discussing Kahn's disease, which is where the patients have hyperaldosteronism. I'm screwing up the pronunciation. But essentially, these patients have this disease where they have high levels of aldosterone and in their hearts they have a non they have these non-enlarged fibrotic changes that were very similar to the case report um, uh, of that patient the 21 year old steroid users but why do why do steroids cause this fibrotic change similar to that of aldosterone uh, uh, that aldosterone causes so for those who don't know, steroids or uh, testosterone actually stimulate angiotensin II, and I'll show you the pathway here. 
but angiotensin 2 essentially increases the level of aldosterone. And there are multiple papers that prove this association between testosterone and aldosterone. Uh, aldosterone. So when there's more angiotensin 2, there's more aldosterone. In addition, DHT t seems to stimulate aldosterone also. DHT is, can be the, is the result of a conversion by 5-alpha reductase of testosterone or can be from, let's say, a DHT derivative. Now, that hasn't been shown, but one can assume that might be the case. But then again, just quickly to mention, having low androgens is also a risk factor for poor prognostic, uh, uh, for a poor prognosis in heart failure. So, furthermore, testosterone has also been shown to increase deoxycorticosterone, which is a precursor to aldosterone. So there are multiple mechanisms in which testosterone increase aldosterone. And as we proved in the previous paper, aldosterone seems to cause this fibrotic or scarring change in the heart. And prior to the androgen receptor hypothesis, that, that the paper about uh, hearts having androgen receptors and that there being hypertrophy, prior to that paper, papers came out about why the hearts and steroid users look different. And they had this, they called it the MC hypothesis or minerally corticoid hypothesis, in which the steroid users had way too many mineral corticoids aldosterone is included in that, and that causes the fibrotic change. Furthermore, the, the androgen receptor paper did not find a link between testosterone and fibrosis, but they weren't really looking for that specifically. So again, I um, just want to emphasize this point. Whilst it's commonly thought that controlling your blood pressure on cycle is the main way of preventing heart enlargement, that is true. It does prevent the, it could prevent the possible hypertrophy from happen, happening. It doesn't cause, uh, prevent you from getting this fibrosis or scarring. Furthermore, hypertrophy by the androgen receptors are reversible. So what am I going to suggest? Now, I would never suggest you take steroids, but in the case that you are, and especially when you're using superphysiological doses of st testosterone, you'll probably get higher doses of aldosterone, and that will lead to scarring of the heart, which is not reversible. So whilst hypertrophy possibly is, the scarring is not. Um, while uh, some cases have shown it can be, but um, do you need specific medications, which I'll mention. So how do you prevent the scarring from happening, and if you have it, how do you solve it, pretty much? So there are a variety of medications, and ones that are more, uh, which are a, a bit safer, such as your ACE inhibitors, which I'll show how they work using the um, flow diagram again. So they essentially just inhibit this angiotensin converting enzyme, uh, therefore reducing angiotensin 2 and aldosterone. Or you have ARBs, which tend to be, or angio re angiotensin receptor blockers, which work peripherally and block the action of angiotensin 2. And remember, testosterone increases angiotensin 2. So this is one of the ways in which you can prevent this fibrosis. Angiotensin receptor blockers tend to be better tolerated because they don't cause the dry cough or angioedema. Though well, that's a rare side effect of ACE inhibitors. You also have spironolactone or aldactone, which blocks the effects of um, aldosterone and testosterone. However, the side effect profile is huge, and in papers they haven't really shown that it prevents or reverses hypertrophy or fibrosis, uh, whilst ARBs and ACE inhibitors have. So, I just again want to emphasize that whilst hypertrophy does occur due to high blood pressure, and it's important to, cause, uh, to prevent your blood pressure from spiking on steroids, the cause of the blood, high blood pressure, uh, the, uh, 
the cause of the high blood pressure, which is usually through aldosterone, because aldosterone increases your blood pressure, that is a more important pathway that needs to be considered. Because if you control that, you control your blood pressure, you prevent the hypertrophy, and you prevent the scarring. So that's the importance of uh, using ACE inhibitors and ARBs. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about this topic, whether you disagree, agree, I'd like to know. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.